Thank you very much. Good afternoon. I'm excited today to talk to you about the role of AI in transforming customer experience, and specifically the role it plays in reducing customer churn on everyone's minds at the moment, and how it can revolutionize revenues as well. I recently read an article by Frost & Sullivan, the global analyst firm, that read uh, along the lines of, in the next three years, by the year 2020, customer experience will overtake product and price as the number one differentiator for businesses. So it's not surprising that CMOs, chief marketing officers, and heads of customer care, customer service directors, are the primary buyers of artificial intelligence. And I'd like to add to that, AI is not a futuristic trend. It's not something that would happen in five years' time. We've seen, in fact, just the past few years, companies like Facebook and Google, Netflix, and many others who are embracing intelligence. And specifically in our industry, in the past nine months since Mobile World Congress, we've seen companies like Telefonica, Vodafone, Orange, Smart, and others who are developing their own AI solutions and strategies. Some of them are at different stages of, of, the, of the life cycle than others. So what does it mean for marketing departments and customer care departments? Customers today have very, very high expectations, and that's due to the, the digital providers in the market, the Netflixes and the Googles in the world. And it's not just millennials. All of us have these same expectations, high demands. We're used to these seamless experiences, this ease of doing business, ease of purchasing new products and new services. And those same customers expect that from their bank and from their telco operator as well. So the, the chief marketing officer and a marketing department has a bit of a challenge, which is to move away from traditional, very, very broad marketing, which is, as you can see, very product-centric, which is very disconnected across different channels. So what the, the, the user experience for the customer is, what they get when they walk into a store versus speaking to an agent in the contact center versus the experience they get on a mobile app or the website is completely fragmented. We're moving away from that and we're leveraging AI to create this more one-to-one -one personalized customer experience. That's not product-centric, it's customer-centric. It's personalized one-to-one -one offers. It's understanding at precisely what point to engage the customers. So it's all about being proactive, being contextual. And it's also about creating this consistent journey. We're not talking about marketing campaigns. We're talking about journeys, which is much more long-term, but a consistent journey across every channel. And we'll talk about that in a bit more detail. So I've broken this out into these four phases. These are the four milestones that you need to bear in mind when developing and deploying an intelligent customer engagement solution, starting with data. You can't talk about AI without talking about the role of big data. Uh, so ensuring you have access to real-time, high-quality operational data is really the backbone to any intelligent strategy, certainly when it comes to intelligent customer engagement. Moving on to personalization, we'll talk about what I mean by personalization. The third area is being proactive and being contextual. So understanding at what point to engage a customer when they're most likely to be receptive to that message and to that communication. And a fourth, and I touched upon it briefly, is this concept of a continuous omnichannel journey. Let's start with data. Your typical organization has in the region of about 40 to 50 different systems that contain customer data. I think for service providers, it's probably quite a, quite a bit more than that. So how do you consolidate data from fragmented systems, both first party and also leveraging third party data from social media and other sources, Bring that data all together to create a 360 degree view of your customers or customer profile. This is the starting point for any intelligent customer engagement solution. Creating this customer profile, it's not, a, it's not a database, it's a profile that's alive and that's dynamic. It's constantly evolving based on real time buyer behavior. And it's a single source of the truth. The second thing and what we've done at Amdocs is we've integrated machine learning into the mix to calculate real time customer KPIs. So things like churn risk, or purchase propensity. So what's the likelihood that a customer is going to purchase a new device or a new bundle? And using the machine learning to calculate a particular score, a particular model. And then leveraging the machine learning to then trigger a proactive notification or a next best action. This is the full suite. Reach out to the customer at precisely the right point in time when they're most likely to engage. The next step is personalization. So, what do Sylvester Stallone and Donald Trump have in common? Now, it's a bit misleading because the photo of Donald Trump is quite a recent photo, 
And as you can probably see by the photo of Sylvester Stallone, it's taken a few years ago. Now, most analytical engines that serve online adverts, online promotions, would not be able to distinguish between these two people. And why is that? Because believe it or not, they actually share quite a lot in common. They're both American, they're both born in the same year, married three times, wealthy, they watch basketball, and many other similar character traits and similar viewing habits, online viewing habits. Quite surprising. But I think everyone in this room can quite clearly see that aside from these similarities, these two people are the opposite ends of the, of the spectrum. To personalize customer interactions requires complex analysis of large volumes of data. And this is where AI, or specifically machine learning, comes into the picture to also make the development of these algorithms to provide truly personalized, one-to-one, -one, intelligent customer engagement based on the data, based on real-time events and customer um, uh, behaviors as well. Let's move on and talk about context. You can't wait for your customers to take an action. You have to be proactive. And so leveraging the customer profile, which I touched upon before, leveraging by behavior and real-time events will enable you to understand at precisely what point to engage the customer. In this case, you have a customer based on the data that we know about him. Let me just go back. We know that he loves cars. And he knows that he frequently visits Top Gear, which is a, a popular TV show based on cars, also a popular website. So we know that he frequently visits Top Gear website. And so the machine is determining that the best channel to engage the customer on is Top Gear. So it's optimizing the banner ad, which you see there. So we know we want to reach out to the customer with this personalized offer. It happens to be a, a triple play bundle with a 4K TV. And it's deciding that this is the best channel that has the, mo the, the greatest chance of, of the customer acting upon this, this banner. And we'll talk about this a bit later. We've got a great video that really brings us to life. Let's move on and talk about the, the customer journey, or the continuous journey. We're using AI to orchestrate the customer journey. We're not talking about campaigns here. We're talking about a longer term uh, journey. So the machine is orchestrating the journey, and it's self-learning, constantly self-learning and optimizing and fine-tuning the different steps and different phases of the journey. So in this example you see in front of you right now, you can see that we reached out to the customer with a new uh, upsell uh, promotion. And the customer, for whatever reason, he uh, didn't accept it. He ignored it. So the machine is deciding what the best course of action should be now. Should it be revise the offer? Should it be change a promotion? Should it be change a channel to engage the customer? Should it be tweak the words, the content, the messaging? And now I want to show you a video that really brings us all to life and explains how each of these four different components or phases comes together to transform customer engagement and provide a great customer experience. This is John, and this is his family. He's got his wife, Sharon, and these are his two kids, Lindsay and Daniel, but we'll get back to them later. John is a dedicated NXT communication customer. While at the office a week ago, John received a notification from his NXT app about a new triple play offer. He looked at it carefully, but decided not to purchase right then. I as Intelligent Customer 360 captures the fact that although John had shown interest, he did not purchase, and this data can be leveraged for future engagements. On his way back home with his friend, who, by the way, never stops talking, John was busy doing a Google search for a new 4K TV that he recently heard about. Now, Aya knows that John is potentially going to be buying a new TV set. When John arrives home to his sweet little family, he sees that his kids are, well, kind of busy watching the Disney Channel. Guess what? Aya noticed that as well. As usual, John likes to finish his day looking at his favorite website, Top Gear. Now let's review. Aya knows that John didn't purchase the previous plan from the app. Aya knows that he's about to buy a new 4K TV set. And Aya knows that his kids love the Disney Channel. NXT can now deliver the exact personal offering for John using the best channel to present it. So let's get back to John. On the Top Gear website, there's an NXT ad waiting for him with a personalized plan that fits his exact needs. 
He wants it, and after a few entries, he's made his payment. Three seconds later, John receives an email with confirmation of purchase. Within two days, John receives an email with an installation guide to connect his new device that's just been delivered. John tries unsuccessfully to connect it to the TV several times using the installation guide until he finally gives up but decides to contact NXT on their Facebook bot. However, after a while, Amdoc's intelligent chat box recognizes John's frustration and distress using sentimental analysis. And this is when Aya again takes action and notifies the NXT call center to proactively contact John and directs the call to the most capable person a professional who specializes in installations and knows in real time the exact status of her customer. The NXT call center was a big help and John successfully installs the device and can finally watch TV with his family. And just like in the fairy tale, they all lived happily ever after. Okay, so hopefully that uh, explains the, the different uh, phases coming together. And, I didn't talk about the chatbot, of course, uh, a lot of the sessions today and over the next couple of days will be focusing on intelligence-based bots and uh, additional capabilities like sentiment analysis and other funky things as well. Um, I want to move on and talk about the, the great work that Smart Communications did. Smart Communications are a tier one mobile operator in Asia. They have over 60 million subscribers in the in Philippines. Um, and they were, again, looking to embrace this concept of an intelligent, one-to-one -one personalized customer engagement. Um, they had two primary strategies, uh, which was firstly uh, top-up stimulation, and secondly was reduced churn. And so they worked with Amdocs to develop this, this uh, intelligent customer engagement solution, uh, which was integrated into their enterprise data warehouse. It's connected to their CRM, to their charging system. And we worked with them to define five key uh, behavior profiles or user profiles including uh, low users, uh, non-data users, high-value users, et cetera, a couple more as well. And the results were really, really phenomenal, actually. Just in a few months, we've only started working with them. And in that short amount of time, they drastically reduced customer churn. Uh, their customer index score went up. And also, they uh, increased their monthly top-up lift by 3% in, in a very short amount of time. So that gives a, a good example of the kind of uh, success that companies like Smart and others are having as well. And I want to wrap up with a final slide to talk about where to start. You know, you, you've got a good idea of the vision, but how can you make it work for your, your organizations, your, your companies? So what are the, the five steps to success? Firstly, we've touched upon it already, but start with strategy, not with technology. It sounds obvious, uh, but a lot of people tend to get carried away with some of the exciting AI capabilities in the market today. And that's great, but understand what are the problems that you're trying to solve, what are the challenges that you're trying to resolve, and then look at how AI can, can solve it. Evaluate data. Look at your existing data management platform. Is it fit for purpose? Can you extract high-quality data in real time, complete data sets? Uh, or do you need to look at perhaps augmenting your existing data warehouse with some newer capabilities, maybe an operational data store, something like that? Uh, what about the actual data sources themselves? Do you need to bring in third-party data to get a better understanding and, and intent data on your customers. The third area is, of course, then you look at the different technologies. And we, I've touched upon some of them, but there are many more as well. Engage your organization. One of the biggest challenges uh, that organizations have today is not the technology, it's actually the cultural aspect of AI. Many people are just not ready to embrace AI, or many people don't understand the value of AI, of AI so they need to be educated. And the, the fifth and final point is, and it's, again, it's obvious, but measure outcomes. So when you're developing the strategy from day one, understand what the metrics are, what the success criteria is as well. So continuously measure outcomes to build the business case and show the worth to your, the chief financial officer and other people in the organization. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your time and enjoy uh, the rest of the event. <laughs>